Hi, my name is Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. Today we'll be talking about drug stability. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with others who may find it helpful too. And if you would like to have lifetime ad-free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of all my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link to my course is in the comments and the description. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So first we'll look at what is drug stability. Drug stability is the ability of a drug product to maintain its efficacy and safety by remaining stable, which means unchanged, during its time of use and storage. There is physical, chemical, and therapeutic stability, and these assure the efficacy and safety of drug products, since these types of instabilities can lead to drug degradation, which means breakdown, and changes in the concentrations of drugs. Microbial stability, that assures the safety of drug products, since this type of instability can lead to contamination of drug products by microorganisms, so bacteria can grow in it if, the, if there isn't microbial stability. So now we'll look in more detail at the drug stability types that I just mentioned. So physical stability, it refers to a drug product remaining stable regarding its physical properties. So for example, if you have a liquid medication and it has loss of water, um, that can lead to crystal formation. So that would be an issue with its physical stability. Chemical stability refers to the ability of a drug product to maintain its chemical structure. So an example of this would be a high temperature, if a drug is exposed to high temperature, it can have transformation um, into a different chemical entity. entity. It can cause a chemical re reaction that will actually change the drug chemically. Therapeutic stability refers to the ability of a drug product to maintain its therapeutic effect. So an example of this would be an expired medication. Um, the medication would no longer have its desired effect, like it has lost its therapeutic stability. And microbial stability refers to the ability of a drug product to maintain its sterility. So an example of this could also be an expired medication, but the medication, it's become unsafe due to bacterial contamination. It's no longer sterile. It, it has lost its microbial stability. Now we'll look at some factors affecting drug stability. Um, there are many factors that can affect the physical, chemical, therapeutic, and microbial stability of drugs. And these include temperature, moisture, light, air, dosage forms, and the container storage. And we'll look at each of these in more detail. So first we'll look at temperature. So higher temperatures increase the rate of drug breakdown by accelerating chemical reaction rates. So most drugs require storage at controlled room temperature, which is 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And some drugs require refrigeration. This would be 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. And some examples of this would be insulin and some drugs after reconstitution. And there are a few drugs that require freezer storage, and this would be uh, mostly some vaccines. So since higher temperatures are an issue, uh, medications should not be stored in vehicles um, because they're hot, they can get hot inside from the sun, and in bathrooms, which the temperature gets hotter from showers. Now we'll look at moisture. So water can cause chemical reactions, um, specifically hydrolysis and oxidation reactions. It can cause these to occur more rapidly. And this leads to drug degradation, which is drug breakdown. And so then you have an ineffective product. And another issue with moisture is that water also promotes microbial growth. So you can get bacterial contamination of drug products. So this is why reconstituted products, the ones that you add water, um, have a short expiration. Um, for example, like the antibiotic suspensions, it's generally seven to 14 days after they've been reconstituted because with water, you get an increase in these chemical reactions that can cause the drug to break down. And in, this is another reason that bathrooms, you get the moisture from showers, or they are not a good place to store medications. Another factor is light. Um, nearly all medications should be stored out of direct light. This is why medications are dispensed by pharmacies in those amber colored vials, and sometimes they're other colors, but it is to help filter out light. And light exposure to photosensitive drugs can cause degradation or breakdown of the dosage form. 
Um, you can get disintegrated tablets. That would be a breakdown of the dosage form. And it can also break down the drug itself. And this can lead to inadequate dosage and loss of potency of the drug. So light sensitive drugs, it's important to know, they can be affected by both sunlight or even artificial light. So that's why medications, they should be stored in their original container until right before um, they're to be administered. All right, another drug stability factor is air. So air can decrease drug stability due to its content of oxygen and water, which can increase the rate of drug breakdown. So oxygen, um, it can lead to oxidation reactions, which causes drug breakdown. And water in the air, which we know this is humidity, this can cause drug breakdown and microbial contamination of drug product. So this is why medications should be stored in airtight containers and not be removed until immediately before administ administration to maximize their stability. Another factor is dosage forms. Um, solid dosage forms like tablets and capsules generally have more drug stability compared to liquid dosage forms, which would be like solutions and suspensions, and that's due to their water content. Remember the higher water content causes an increased risk of drug breakdown and risk of bacterial growth. And I have a table here that has some signs of drug instability in various dosage forms. So with tablets, um, they could possibly have some drug stability issues if you notice discoloration, disintegration, or clumping together. With suspension solutions and syrups, um, you can get crystal formation, an expanded bottle due to formation of gases, and this would indicate bacterial growth. Um, for sterile liquids, such as injectables and eye drops, um, if you get a change in color, cloudiness, or surface film, these are all signs of instability, and these products shouldn't be used. Um, creams and ointments, you can have a change in consistency or a separation of the product. And suppositories, you can have excessive softening or hardening, or like dryness. And the last drug stability factor we'll look at is container storage. So some medications are dispensed in their original container, and this helps to protect the quality of sensitive medications. And some medications can react with the plastic containers and have to be stored in glass, and this is usually for liquids, certain liquids. So um, I have a table here of some common medications that are stored in the original manufacturer container. And um, nitrostat or nitroglycerin tablets, Singulair or Monte Lucas tablets, trileptal, um, generics oxcarbazepine suspension, um, anything that's an orally disintegrating tablet, and that's because these dissolve in the mouth and so they're very easily broken down from moisture. Um, Macardus, which is telmasartan tablets, um, Neor Neural or Gengraf, this is cyclosporin capsules, and also the cyclosporin solution as well and uh, chewable tablets when possible. And that's because these, have a, these are a soft formulation and they're easily broken down from moisture. All right, now we're gonna talk about drug stability and expiration dates. So an expiration date specifies the time period that a drug product is known to remain stable when it's stored according to its labeled storage conditions. So to remain stable means that the drug product would retain its strength, quality, and purity. Drug manufacturers cannot guarantee the potency and safety of their drug past the expiration date. So potency issues, it would be like the strength can lessen. So the drug is going to be ineffective or not as effective as it should be. And um, safety issues, um, the drug can become contaminated and possibly even form toxic metabolites. And tetracycline is a medication that actually, when expired, it can form toxic metabolites. So that can be dangerous. Expiration dates are required by the FDA for all medications. This includes prescription and non-prescription. And expiration dates of drugs that are repackaged in the pharmacy are given an expiration date of one year from the date of repackaging or the manufacturer's expiration date if it comes first. And if drugs are stored under ideal conditions, um, it's possible that they are still good after the expiration date. But since there's no easy way to test them to know for sure, it's best to discard expired drugs. Now we're going to look at some common drugs with reduced times of stability. Um, this includes antibiotic suspensions after reconstitution. We've talked about that with adding the water. Insulin products, GLP-1 analogs. 
There's the miscellaneous drugs that require refrigeration we'll talk about and nitrostat or nitroglycerin tablets. And something to keep in mind, um, generally with refrigerated drugs, they're going to have a reduced time of stability once they're opened or um, once they are brought to room temperature. Now we'll look at the stability of antibiotic suspensions. So I have a table here that shows some common antibiotic suspensions um, and their expiration after they've been reconstituted and if they require refrigeration. So for amoxyl suspension, the generic name is amoxicillin, it expires 14 days after reconstitution. Refrigeration is preferable but not required. For Cipro, the generic name is ciprofloxacin, it expires 14 days after reconstitution and refrigeration is not necessary, but it can be, but it definitely needs to be protected from freezing. For cleosin, the generic name is clindamycin. Um, this suspension expires 14 days after reconstitution and it should not be kept in the refrigerator because it gets too thick. For Keflex, the generic name is cephalexin. This suspension expires 14 days after reconstitution and it does need to be refrigerated. For Omnicef, the generic is ceftonir. It expires 10 days after reconstitution and refrigeration is not required. And for Zithromax, the generic name is azithromycin. This suspension expires 10 days after reconstitution and refrigeration, just like the ciprofloxacin, is not necessary, but it can be and it also needs to be protected from freezing. And I have just a reminder here that with all suspensions, they need to have a shake well before use um, sticker on them just so that patients know that they, they shake those before they use them so that they get the proper dose. Now we'll look at the stability of insulin products. All unopened insulin before dispensing is stored in the refrigerator and it should not be frozen. And the expiration date is on the package. With open valves, um, those can be stored in the refrigerator or at room temperature and they will have the same expiration. And most open cartridges, these are what go in the insulin pumps, and the pre-filled pens, those should be stored at room temperature. So now we'll have a table here of the stability of the common insulin products. So with Humalog, um, where the generic is insulin Lispro, when it's unopened at room temperature or opened, um, it should be stored for 28 days, four weeks, and then it needs to be discarded. For Novolog, the generic is insulin Aspart, it's the same thing. It's unopened at room temperature or opened, it's going to be a 28 day expiration, which is four weeks. For Lantus, or Basaglar, um, the generic of this is insulin glargine. Um, it has an expiration of 28 days or four weeks, you know, when it's unopened at room temperature or opened. Um, Levamir or insulin detamir is the generic. Its um, expiration is 42 days or six weeks when it's unopened at room temperature or, or opened. And Traceba, which is insulin degladec. Um, it has an expiration of 56 days or eight weeks um, when it's unopened at room temperature or opened. And a note about the Traceba, um, the open pins can actually be refrigerated. And just a way to help remember the insulins that have a longer expiration date once they're um, at room temperature or opened, the Levamir and the Traceba, those are both long acting insulins. And so they have a longer um, time that they are stable for and that's just a way that you can remember that. Okay now we'll look at the stability of the GLP-1 analogs. Um, the GLP-1 analogs those are the injectable medications for diabetes that are not insulin and their generic name ends in the suffix glutide or atide. So all unopened GLP-1 analogs before dispensing are stored in the refrigerator and those also cannot be frozen and the expiration date is on the package. So now I have a table of um, the storage requirements of the common GLP-1 analogs um, once, they're, once they're open, just to give you more information about those. So Trulicity, it's generic as dulaglutide, it needs to be kept in the refrigerator, and if needed, it may be stored at room temperature for up to 14 days. For Victoza, um, its generic name is lyraglutide, it needs to be kept in the refrigerator prior to its first use, and then it may be stored at room temperature after the first use for up to 30 days. And Ozempic, its generic is semaglutide. 
it needs to be kept in the refrigerator prior to first use and you may store it at room temperature after the first use for up to 56 days. And now we'll look at some miscellaneous drugs that require refrigeration. So azocyte, um, that's generic as azithromycin. These are eye drops, an antibiotic eye drop. Um, these need to be kept refrigerated, but then once they're open, they can be stored at room temperature for 14 days. Um, Zalatan, which it's generic as latanoprost, these are eye drops for glaucoma. These need to be kept in the refrigerator, and they may be stored at room temperature after the first use for up to six weeks. Mycalcin, it's a calcitonin nasal spray for osteoporosis. It also needs to be kept in the refrigerator but it may be stored at room temperature after its first use for up to 30 to 35 days, depending on the package size. Nuvaring, this is an ethanyl estradiol and etanogesterol. This is an estrogen progesterone hormone. It needs to be kept in the refrigerator, and then after dispensing, it can be stored at room temperature for up to four months. Phenergan, uh, it's generic as promethazine, the suppositories. These are for nausea and vomiting. Those need to be kept in the refrigerator. Humira, which is adalimumab, this is an injection, a monoclonal antibody injection for arthritis and psoriasis. And you can see that um, these drugs that are monoclonal antibodies end with the suffix mab, so that's a way to identify those. But this needs to be kept in the refrigerator and be sure not to have it frozen. And it also needs protective from light. And this is the general requirement for the other monoclonal antibody drugs that you see end in the suffix MAB. And with vaccines, these need to be kept in the refrigerator and some actually require freezer storage. Now we'll look at the stability of nitrostat, nitroglycerin tablets. So nitroglycerin is a vasodilator for chest pain and nitroglycerin tablets are a fast acting sublingual or SL means under the tongue. Uh, that's a dosage form for quick chest pain relief. Is when there's chest pain, they put it under their tongue and it dissolves and gets into the system quickly. So nitroglycerin tablets are very unstable and should be stored at room temperature away from heat, moisture, and direct light in the original small glass bottle they come in. Nitroglycerin tablets should be kept in the small glass bottle they come in and the cap should be screwed on tightly after each use to prevent loss of potency because these do have such issues with instability. And I have a picture there you can see what the a little bottle of the nitroglycerin tablets look like. And generally those come in a small quantity in the bottle, usually 25 tablets. All right, now we'll look at a summary and some key points to remember. So drug stability is the ability of a drug product to maintain its efficacy and safety by remaining stable or unchanged during its time of use and storage. Factors affecting drug stability include temperature, moisture, light, air, dosage form, and container storage. And some common drugs with reduced times of stability include antibiotic suspensions, insulins, GLP-1 analogs, drugs requiring refrigeration, and nitroglycerin tablets. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to see more of my pharmacy learning videos. And if you'd like to have lifetime ad-free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of all my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link is in the comments and the description. Thank you.